and welcome to the presentation on desensitization. This is basically to deal with one of the most common problems people have with um, IT exams and um, it really, really centers around fear. People build up exams to be some horrible monster, same with any test really, driving test or job interviews. They get themselves into um, a very fearful, panicky state and they don't perform very well. And then this is a bit of a um, loop because because um, they don't do very well, they then start to dread taking the exam the next time and often they just quit or um, carry on studying but never seem to actually book the exam again. So we're going to cover a few ideas to uh, to deal with this sort of issue really, how fear works, turning what's new into old, familiarisation and looking at some outcomes. So first thing is, um, it's looking about fear really, Feels, fear is a primordial emotion, we've felt fear ever since um, you know, we were given a prefrontal cortex and fear is pretty useful actually, it, it helped us um, deal with situations when we were out hunting, I mean this is tens of thousands of years ago, hunting in groups, um, helped us deal with scenarios where we were under attack by enemies and that sort of stuff but really fear in modern times is unlikely we're going to be um, faced with life-threatening situations but we still have the fear response so we really need to know how it works and what to do about it so um, I mean we're really only born with two fears as a baby and that's of falling and of loud noises neither of which normally happens during the exam so fear really is normally based around some sort of new situation. Let's forget about the fact we're going to be attacked um, because, as I said, that's probably not really going to happen. So what happens is people generally feel fear around something that's new, a change or something that's uncomfortable. And fear is the default response, really. So what the brain is doing, it's releasing danger signals and then you'll, re you'll be releasing adrenaline and you'll go, your body will go into what's known as fight or flight mode. So um, blood will be drawn away from um, the extremities into your core and uh, into your vital organs and also into your muscles as well because your body's preparing you to fight. What happens is it's taken away from the places where you would normally need to use it, which is your brain especially during the exam. Now um, when fear is actually triggered in your body you're going to release adrenaline which basically affects the systems of your body. It's going to induce memory loss because you've got less blood in your brain. You'll experience tunnel vision which is useful for when you're in a uh, in a fight or in a hunt hunting situation but not any other time really. You'll experience uh, sweating and shaking and inability to concentrate so uh, a bit about the mind now, what can happen around if we start experiencing fear or we've got something fearful coming up such as the exam, what the mind can start doing is looking into the future and then it will predict outcomes. Now nine times out of ten, ten because people can't control their mind, uh, the mind starts predicting doom. So it will imagine a worst case scenario and then start replaying that scenario over and over again and the thing about the mind is it doesn't understand the difference between and now nah, uh, what's real and what's imagined so if it's imagining failure and things going terribly wrong it will then release cortisol into your bloodstream which will have a, a wearing effect and it can actually make people quite ill I'm sure you've heard of people getting diseases and cancers due to stress and um, being wear and tear so the best thing to do, which we'll cover another, uh, in another presentation, is rehearse the outcome in your mind. There's a great book, um, oh, it'll, it'll come to me in a minute, but um, you need to start rehearsing the outcome. Oh yeah, the book's called Psycho-Cybernetics. Okay. Uh, Maxwell Maltz wrote that book. And it basically talks about rehearsing the outcome in your mind over and over and over again so you're far more likely to actually achieve the outcome that is in your in your head. Okay, new to old. So what we want to do is a new situation that looks frightening. Uh, for example, when I was younger I used to be scared about diving into water so eventually 
I think somebody helped me. I stood at the edge of the water and bent my head down and sort of fell into the water really. But I did it over and over and over again. And eventually I built up the courage to start diving off the board and then a higher board and then a bit higher. And eventually it it didn't become, it wasn't frightening anymore because I'd, I'd done it over and over again. So repetition. So what you want to do is repeat the stuff you're going to be doing in the exam. So I really do recommend lots and lots and lots of practice exams. I recommend doing lots and lots of hands-on stuff. And I say mix up here because a lot of people have got, use the same equipment, the same interfaces, the same IP addresses and everything's the same but in the exam you're not going to have that. You're going to have an unfamiliar network, unfamiliar IP addressing scheme, unfamiliar topology so you need to be mixing stuff up. Flashcards and lots of troubleshooting as well if this is the sort of thing you could be tested on. Troubleshooting is where you've got something that is partially configured but doesn't seem to be working correctly and then you're going to have to go in there, issue show commands and um, fi fix the parts that are broken. And put yourself under some pressure. In the exam you're under a clock so you need to be working under a clock when you're doing all of the above. Hands on labs and also exams. And work under exam conditions as well so you won't have calculators there unless it's permitted for your exam. You, you won't have um, note paper what you probably have is some sort of whiteboard. So I'm not saying go out and buy one, but just simulate the exam conditions as closely as you can. The next thing is familiarization. So be familiar with the exam conditions. Most vendors uh, will have a designated testing authorities such as Silver and Prometric and uh, they have the same conditions for all of their exams they don't just run exams for IT there's pilots exams and all sorts of things so look at the exam conditions you normally have to do it on a PC they don't have laptops depending on the testing company or the testing policies you won't be able to go back and answer questions you can't take notes with you you can normally make notes while you're in the exam but then you have to hand those over to the invigilator uh, often, uh, in fact most of the time in the exam testing room there's be several PCs with other people taking exams making a little bit of noise, obviously not much, and there'll be uh, a camera recording you somewhere in there as well. Location as well, you must visit the testing centre. Don't wait until exam day to go and visit the testing centre. Most of them have uh, receptions where you can go in um, ask about the exam room and um, how to book exams and that sort of stuff. You obviously do it online but I do recommend you go in. Um, make sure you find out what type of identification you need to take with you, photo ID or something else. And if possible ask to view the testing room so you've, you can see it before you're actually, you've got your actual exam. The other thing is the vendor, they nearly all provide testing resources for you to do practice exams. Um, any emulators, a lot of them uh, provide exam emulators, so you're clicking a button and it will produce a page where it's got a flash emulator of how you answer the questions, the question styles, multiple choice, drag and drop, fill in the blank, short essay, that sort of thing. So what we're doing is coming back to desensitization. We're getting used to the type of things we're going to be tested on so we no longer feel fearful about it. And make sure you do know what the syllabus and the exam requirements are. And these change regularly. It can be every few weeks or every few months. So if you haven't checked the vendor syllabus page recently, make sure you do that. The other things we want to look at outcomes. There's only really two for the exams. There's a pass or a fail. Now I have known people have their exam software crash halfway through, so I mean it, it kind of counts as a fail really, although it's not their fault and the exam has to be retaken at another time or reloaded or something like that. But your two outcomes, you pass or you fail, obviously pass is what we want. If you fail, all we do, all we do is uh, reset, um, reset, sorry, which basically means look at feedback, you should get a printout, look at your weak areas, ask yourself which parts you didn't perform very well on even though you should have been able to do well what, and why didn't you. You write a plan to address all of those weak areas and take it again. 
So it's not rocket science, but I do see a lot of people making a lot of mistakes around these sort of areas over and over and over again. So um, I hope you found that useful.